Hi, Stephanie. Let's take a look at the new set of essays you've sent us, the crop production in France. Let's see what you wrote. The pie chart illustrates six different kinds of crop production in France in the year 2017. Overall, cotton was the main crop grown in France. Approximately one-third, 34.4%, out of all the produced crop was cotton. The rest of the produced goods were food goods, whereas cotton was the only non-food good. With a total of nearly 45%, the second main produced crops were sugar and wheat. Only 1.5 percentage points less wheat was manufactured than sugar. That's a little awkward. So let's try it again. Um, let's see. How could you have said this? How about this? There was a, only a 1.5 percentage difference between wheat and sugar. France grew a significant amount of barley. A little under one-fifth, 18% of the produced crops was barley. France produced a small amount of corn and rice. The amount of sowed rice was nearly double of what the amount of corn produced was. Okay, so here's the good news. The good news is that your grammar was good. The good news is that uh, the vocabulary was fine, so no problems. Um, the problems, obviously, are that this was really severely under length, um, and so that's going to definitely create a problem for you. And um, also, you missed some wonderful opportunities for some good cohesion. Um, you, didn't really, you didn't really have any of those cohesive devices that... Um, like firstly, secondly, and so forth. You didn't have any of them, and that's fine. That's not the problem at all, because those sent, tend to get kind of clunky. But what happened was, is look at this sentence. Uh, France grew a significant amount of barley. Under a fifth, uh, a little under a fifth was barley. So it just feels really repetitive when you do that, okay? And there are really um, a lot of better ways to express this and make it sound grammatically more advanced and, again, more, more cohesive. So what I would have done here is, France grew a significant amount of barley. This crop accounted for a little under one-fifth, 18%, of the crops produced in France. Okay? So this is far more cohesive when you use things like this crop or the crop or, or things like that or this product. All right? So that's one example of how you can create cohesion. And it's an important thing to do. Okay, so start getting into the habit and you, so you're not really repeating cotton, 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 barley, 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 and so forth. Now, um, I, if I'm not mistaken, you asked in your notes to me about uh, the small amount of data. Now, here's the thing, Stephanie. It's true that this kind of chart is probably uh, the hardest type to write on. Um, I think it's harder to write on this kind of uh, diagram than it is when you have a ton of detail. The key to doing well in this type of diagram is to, number one, extend. Okay, so you're going to have to look for connections between some of the data and extend your answer with those connections. So let me see if I can give you some examples. Take a look at some of the similarities in the numbers or even if they're not really similarities, try to create some. So, for example, you've got cotton at 34.4%. Uh, look at the second to last, um, the second to least produced crop. It's corn, uh, I'm sorry, it's rice. And that number is 3.5. So if you look at this, this is pretty much about one-tenth of this figure. And if you look at corn, Corn is half of this figure, right? So, approximately. So, then it's safe to assume that corn is about 1 20th the amount of cotton. Or, cotton is to produce 20 times more than corn is. So, this is some of the information that you can, um, that you can write about, okay? These are some of the connections you can make, and this way you're really filling up your answer, and you're making, you're kind of emphasizing some of this data and just how um, extreme these differences are. Now, um, you can group information together. One of the reasons why we group a lot of times is to 
talk about um, multiple pieces of data together and you know not write too much but sometimes you can group in order to extend your answer a little further like for example here if you had said cotton was this and then you know uh, second um, the second most produced crop was sugar at this number and then you could say together they made up over 50 percent of the overall crop production in France okay so kind of making a little summary like that would not have been a bad idea either these are how you extend and how you make connections between some of the data okay so that's my suggestion there um, and then of course we talked about cohesion which I wanted to see a little um, more advanced let's see uh, where else could you have done that? I remember there was one other place where, okay, yeah, I think it was here. It was like with cotton. Overall, cotton was the main crop going to France, approximately one third. Okay, no, you could have said it, um, it made up approximately one third of all produced crops in France in 2017. Okay, so again, using it is also another way to provide cohesion. Okay, um, so yeah, things like that are what I would like to see you do a little differently. Um, but absolutely, this was, this was the, the, the most, uh, problematic element of this essay because it was just really under length. Okay. So work on it in the next, uh, set that you do for us. Let's take a look now at your task two, which is, uh, staying in the same job. Let's see what you said. Okay. So. Young adults decide about their education and their career at a very young age. The initial interest in a job can change over the years and people could develop a desire to change their career. It is hard to believe that people stay happy within the same job for their whole life, which is why I do agree that people should take different paths within their work life. Okay, that's lovely. I thought that was good. Um, yeah, no, I have no complaints about that. I thought it was lovely. Um... I even like this, which is why I do agree. That was nice. It was advanced. You used do correctly for emphasis. So that was a lovely um, introduction. Let's take a look at this, uh, the bo first body paragraph. Changing a job or completing, I-N-G, another education. I don't know what you mean by that, another education. Do you mean another degree? I'm not really sure. Can have many positive impacts on people's lives. For example, changing uh, workplace, not the workplace, changing let me think about that. Changing workplace sounds a little better to me. Brings out new challenges for employer. Well, wait a minute. Employers or employees? The people who hire people or the people who work for other people? So make that clear. It, I want to say instinctively it should be employees, but unless you mean employers and I just don't understand. So by learning and developing new tasks with their new work environment, being challenged by new tasks, Okay, now look at this. Here's an example of how you can use cohesion. Even if you had just said by these new tasks, we then know that you are purposely referring back to this example of new tasks. So let's try it like that. Um, being challenged by these new tasks results in having motivation or even a feeling of being a little overwhelmed in a positive way. As mentioned above, people stay generally happier if they like what they do for a living. Changing career and facing new tasks helps to keep people motivated and happy in life. Okay, let's talk about this for a second. First of all, let's talk about the vocabulary. Now, um, where was it? Look at this. You have new tasks, new tasks, new tasks. I am sure that we could have found another synonym, some other um, kind of way of phrasing this so you didn't have to use in a little paragraph the um, phrase new tasks uh, three times. Uh, let's see. Now, here you say happier, and then again, here you write happy. So, the reason why that's an issue is because this is all really kind of basic vocabulary. And, um, when you don't extend your vocabulary, when you don't kind of expand and use maybe some less common vocabulary, you're missing an opportunity to really show your range. So, I really would have uh, preferred to see different, more advanced, maybe less common vocabulary words in the place of these all right so instead of maybe they stay generally happier um they have a general they have a better sense of well-being i mean isn't that a nicer way to say this or um they feel generally more satisfied or um let's see um 
Yeah, I mean, those are a couple of things that, that kind of come to mind. So now let's talk a little bit about the development of this paragraph. I thought that some of it needed a little more development. I mean, if you take a look at it, you've got your first introduction. It's like your topic sentence is this right here. Wait, where is it? There we go. This is your topic sentence. And then this here is your kind of conclusion to the paragraph. So what you really have in terms of development is really just this, and it's not very much. So I really would have liked to see more development here. Um, so what do I mean? Here, for example, you say, being challenged by new tasks results in having motivation or even a feeling of being overwhelmed in a positive way. Well, why or how can you explain to me? Can you give me an example? So I thought that that was lacking. Some of these um, kind of tangible examples so that we can understand what you're referring to. And it's important. That's what helps support your, your essay, giving it evidence, giving um, some examples or some explanations of what it is you're trying to tell us. Okay. Now, next paragraph, let's go on to that. I do have experience in career change and therefore know for a fact how positive it can change someone's work life. Work life what? Work life balance? I think that's what you mean. To become an intensive care nurse, I was forced to take different steps in my career. Education was long and sometimes difficult. Very difficult, sorry. However, having in total three degrees without the apostrophe S here, get rid of that, Having in total three degrees opened up many opportunities for me. I am now not only able to work in an intensive care unit, but also an instructor, ah, as an instructor for basic life support courses, for example. To have several work opportunities keeps me happy and motivated. Okay, um, let's see. It was a nice paragraph, but it, I didn't really agree with your organization. So in other words, here you talked about new challenges, right? New challenges, new tasks, and how this uh, makes people happier. And then here, rather than give us another main idea as to why changing jobs can be a good thing, you instead spend the entire paragraph on your personal example. Um, if you had shortened this, this was what was missing in this paragraph, this kind of real world tangible example. But what's missing then is, uh, another main idea. So another, ex another kind of reason why, um, s switching jobs, um, and not keeping the same one your entire life is positive. So you talked about, um, new tasks. You talked about, um, learning new skills. I think you said that, right? No, I think you said that it was important to learn new tasks and have new challenges. Well, why else would it be good to switch jobs? Can you think of any other reasons why people do this? Um, I can come up with a couple for you. One reason why people switch jobs is to get a better salary. Uh, many times it's easier to negotiate a higher salary than it is to get a pay raise at your existing company. Okay. So, um, you know, people can negotiate for things better when, when, when they're applying to a new job. So, uh, that's one very important reason why it's important to switch jobs, or it's really important to gain the experience of different work environments. You learn how different companies operate and the, each work, um, workplace helps you develop a different skill set, a different office environment, maybe different operations, lots of different things. So you're really gaining a lot of skill and these different skills, these different experiences from different workplaces really put you at a wonderful uh, advantage. Okay. So these were some of the ideas you could have developed here, but I have to tell you that I don't really agree with the way you developed this because essentially you only had one main idea. Um, you talked about it and then you had another paragraph that was just an example of what you were saying. I don't really see how these are particularly different. So to sum up, I think it is essential to change career path. I would say get rid of the, at least once in life as a result of a career change, people like to go to work as well as develop, get rid of the ing personal growth. Okay. So that was fine. Um, 
Now I want to go to your questions. I think you understand what the problems were with this essay. It was some vocabulary, but it was primarily uh, task achievement. It was how well you answered the question. Um, so those are the issues. Those are the things that I really want you to be focused on when you uh, both correct these essays and when you re um, come back to us with another set. Now let's talk a little bit about your second question. I already did this. I already answered this, so you should be okay with that. Now, as for your uh, score, we avoid giving scores, Stephanie. We avoid giving scores for a lot of reasons. Um, one of the reasons why is because um, it's supposed to be from an examiner. Um, there are a lot of reasons. It's very possible that anything anyone could tell you uh, outside of both an exam situation and a current examiner, that might be inaccurate. Okay, so um, I can tell you because a lot of times I use the band descriptors in my um, assessments that this essay did have some problems, and I can tell you where the problems were. The problem for me here was absolutely with task achievement. All right, and then a secondary problem, a lesser problem, was with vocabulary. Um, as for here, it was your word count. If you can take a look at what happens with word count, I can assure you that this would have fallen um, one one band for sure because of this. But also, it was really lacking uh, connection, so you probably would have dropped a little bit for task achievement there as well. Okay, um, but do familiarize yourself with the band descriptors if you haven't already done so, and I will make an effort um, in further corrections to kind of give you more detailed information so you can get a sense of where you are. All right, so go ahead, get started on that next set of essays, correct these, and uh, I'll be waiting for them. So good luck to you.